Good to be in the house of the Lord tonight. Amen? We all like to be granted access. We, we, we don't like to be turned down. Can I get an amen? We like to have things. We like to be accepted. Um, I remember as a kid, we went to a fair one time, and I wanted to ride one of the rides, and I was too short. And it frustrated me. It made me mad. Matt has never had that problem. Born at five foot eight and grew since then. Amen. Bless his mom. <laughs> but some of us <laughs> were smaller at one time, and I hate it. It just frustrated me no end. I hate it not being able to do what I wanted to do. And unfortunately, that's where a lot of us are spiritually because we don't ask in the right way or we don't have the right qualifications. Well, let me tell you something. There's a brother in the Bible named Caleb, and we're going to read his story tonight. And let's glean from this what the Lord would have us to. The Bible says in, verse, in chapter 14, verse number 6, Then the children of Judah came unto Joshua in Gilgal. And Caleb the son of Jephunneh, the Kenizzite, said unto him, You know the thing that the Lord said unto Moses, the man of God, concerning me and you in Kadesh Barnea. Forty years old was I when Moses, the servant of the Lord, sent me from Kadesh Barnea to spy out the land. And I brought him word again, again as it was in mine heart. Nevertheless, my brethren that went up with me made the heart of the people melt. But I wholly followed the Lord my God. And Moses swore on that day, saying, Surely the land whereon thy feet have trodden shall be thine inheritance, and thy children's forever, because you have wholly followed the Lord my God. And now, behold, the Lord has kept me alive, as he said, as he, as he said, these forty and five years. Even since the Lord spoke this word unto Moses, while the children of Israel wandered in the wilderness. And now, lo, I am this day fourscore and five years old. Can everybody say eighty-five years old? As yet, I am as strong this day as I was in the day that Moses sent me. As my strength was then, even so is my strength now for war, both to go out and to come in. Now, therefore, give me this mountain. Whereof the Lord spoke in that day. For you have heard. For you heard in that day how the Anakims were there. And that the cities were great and fenced. If so be, the Lord will be with me. Then I shall be able to drive them out. As the Lord said. And Joshua blessed him. And gave unto Caleb the son of Jebunah. Hebron. For an inheritance. There are a few reasons that are written down tonight why Caleb's request was granted. We want a lot of things in life, and we want a lot of things spiritually. As Christians, we should want a lot of things spiritually. You understand that Caleb was 85 years old, and he knew that the promise was made by God 40 years earlier. I don't know how many of you made a promise a lot of many years ago that have kept it even today. I've made a lot of promises to God over the years, and I have kept but a few. And I've gone back on my word many times, but God has never gone back on me. Can you get an amen? God has always been faithful, although my word has failed many times. And I say I will not do this, or I will do that, and I failed, failed, failed. My whole life has been a life of failures. God has never failed me. And I still made requests of God. And I was studying about how Caleb made, me, made his requests. And there are some things that stand out in my mind that are true for us today. The requests that we make to God, we want them to be answered, don't we? We want God's will in our life. We want God to grant us access to His promises. Well, let me tell you something. Here's what you need to do. Verse 9 gave a prophecy. And Moses swore in that day, saying, Surely the land whereon thy feet have trodden shall be thine inheritance, and thy children's forever, because you have wholly followed the Lord my God. Number one, because of the prophecy of God's word. Let me tell you something. When God prophesies to you, when God puts it in his word and he's talking about his people, you can count on everything that God says. Amen. Because there's not one word in God's word that has ever failed. There's not one word from cover to cover in this Bible that has ever been proved wrong that God has ever gone back on. He shifted the world into orbit and it still keeps the same orbit. Amen. He calls the sun to shine, and the sun still shines. 
He caused the grass to grow and the trees to grow. And let me tell you something. It does it to this day because God said it should do that. God's word makes us promises. It says because we are his, it will never bring more on us than we can bear. But with every temptation, he will make a way of escape. Amen? Sometimes your way of escape may mean that you don't, you don't just walk away from a situation. But God will allow you a moment to say a prayer. God will allow you to shut your eyes in prayer just to remove yourself from the situation because you're tempted to do something you shouldn't do. Let me tell you something. God's promises are for you. He said when the enemy comes in like a flood, that it will hold up a standard against you. You understand that the enemy comes in like a flood a lot of times. A flood is not a, a flood. Even just a couple of inches of water can remove an automobile from a road. When it's talking about a flood, it's talking about an amount. Not just one little trickle or one little stream or a droplet. It's talking about a flood. That's the way the enemy attacks us. You can name more than one problem you're going through right now, can't you? Because the enemy doesn't just attack one at a time. He attacks in a whole. He attacks like a flood. But the Bible says when the enemy comes in like a flood, that God will hold up a standard against him. Hallelujah. And we can count on that standard. Isn't that awesome? Knowing that God is going before us and he's protecting us because his word said so. Because the Bible prophesied. That Bible still says today that God is going to come back. And it's going to come back in a moment in the twinkling of an eye. Let me tell you something. That night could be the night. He says that he's got a home prepared for us in glory. He says many are the afflictions of the righteous, but God will deliver him out of them all. Amen? You understand that Caleb was granted access because of prophecy, because the Bible said it. So understand this. If you ask anything and God says to do it in his word, he will do it. Amen? Now, number two, Caleb's faithfulness. Let's go over to Numbers just a moment. Numbers 14. If you don't want to go over there, that's fine. I'm going to read it to you. Numbers 14 says this. Now let me paint the picture for you. Here's what's going on. Moses sends out 12 spies to go into the land of Canaan. They go and spy out the land. They come back. The 10 stand up. 10 out of the 12 stand up and they say, no, we can't do it. There are giants in the land we can't take. It's true, the land flows with milk and honey. It's true, they even cut off and took two men to carry a cluster of grapes. That's how fertile the land was. Yes, this is the land God promised. Yes, God said he can go before us, but we can't take it. That's what 10 of them said. But two of them stood up. And Caleb was one of the two that stood up. And he said, we can take the land because God is with us. That's a faith in God that will not be denied. Caleb was faithful to God's word. And when Caleb was faithful to God's word, God is faithful to his word no matter what. Listen to what it says in Numbers 14. Numbers 14, verse number 1 and 2 say this. And all the congregation lifted up their voice and cried, and the people wept that night because of the report of the ten. And all the children of Israel murmured against Moses and against Aaron. And the whole congregation said unto them, We would, God, that we had died in the land of Egypt, or would, God, that we had died in the wilderness. Anything it has to be better than this. Go to verse number six. And Joshua the son of Nun, and Caleb the son of Jebunah, which were of, which were of them, who searched out the land, rent their clothes, and they spoke unto the company of the children of Israel, saying, The land which we pass through to search it is an exceeding good land. If the Lord delight in us, then he will bring us into this land and give it us, a land which flows with milk and honey. Only rebel not ye against the Lord, neither fear ye the people of the land. You see, their focus was not on obedience to God. Their focus was on the giants in the land. Their focus was on the hardships that they would have to go through, which God said he would lead them through. I'm asking you tonight, what's your focus on? Is your focus on the problem or on the solution? Which one? I pray to God that it's on the solution. Because let me tell you something, if you're not going through a battle, you're going to be going through a battle. It's life. Amen? But God said he'll be with you through it all. And he's faithful and just to deliver us. Listen to what it says in verse 7. It is an exceeding good land. If the Lord delight in us, then he will bring us into the land and give it to us, a land which flows with milk and honey. Only rebellion not against the Lord, neither fear ye the people of the land. 
for they are bread for us. In other words, God made them even for us to eat up and devour. Their defense is departed from them, and the Lord is with us. Fear them not. Church, God's saying that to us tonight. Don't be afraid to go forward in the Lord. You can't fear. You can't fear and walk in faith. There is a place closer to God that each one of us should be in. It's true. Faith never allows us to stay where we are with God. Faith will always drive us closer to God. Now listen to what it says. Verse number 24. But my servant Caleb, because he had another spirit with him, and has followed me fully, him will I bring into the land whereunto he went, and his seed shall possess him. Isn't that awesome? Because he had a different spirit with him. Listen, I know we're all church folk, but even church folk have a bad spirit sometimes. Can I get an amen? Even church folk get down on one another, get down on themselves, get down on the world around them, and they have a different spirit because they're looking at people and they're looking at hardship and they're looking at problems instead of a solution. Caleb had another spirit about him. Everywhere those ten spies went, they saw problems. Oh, they saw a group cluster of grapes, but then they'd have to cut them down. They, they saw these big cities and, and, and the land was fertile, but they saw the walls of the cities. Every time Caleb and Joshua looked around, they saw the grapes that God had given them. They saw the cities that God had given them. Everywhere in their foot trod, they said, this is a promise that God gave us. How do we look at the world around us right now? Are we looking at the problems that it gives us? Are we looking at the situations we're going to have to go through? Or are we looking at the God that gives us the victory? Give him praise, church. It ain't going to hurt you. Number one, because of prophecy, because the Bible said so. Number two, because of Caleb, Caleb's faithfulness. Now go back to Joshua. Number three, it's because he asked in faith. Now let me ask you something. How many of us here pray? How many of us here ask for something when we pray? Yeah. The problem is, do we ask in faith? A lot of us ask in a cry. Talk to me now, church. A lot of us ask in a cry. Oh, God, I want this. Oh, God, let me have that. God, let me go here. And we cry and we moan at God. And all we do is just, we, we, don't, we don't present any faith in God that he's going to do it. You see, the Bible says come boldly before the throne of grace. If you come in boldness, you're not going to be whimpering around. Oh, I can't. You're going to come boldly. God, you are my God. You are faithful. You are going to give me any good things. So I have not because I asked not. So I'm going to stand boldly before you. And I'm going to ask you for this one. And I'm going to believe that if it's good for me, you're going to give it to me. How many of us pray like that? I'm guilty of not praying like that. I'm guilty of, of, of almost praying like a little kid. How about you? Almost praying like, no, oh, um, God, I'd really like to have this. And maybe God will answer it. Maybe you won't. I just don't know. I'm guilty of that. God is faithful. And if it's any good thing, the Bible says he wants to give it to you. The Bible says if we should ask for a piece of fish, uh, some food, God's not going to turn around and get us a rock. He wants us to have good things. He wants to live abundantly. <laughs> we sure don't pray that way, do we? You understand that Caleb he asked in faith, believing that God was going to fulfill his word. You see, it's that kind of faith that God responds to. Listen, it's great to receive a compliment. But when somebody talks good about you to somebody else, I think that's even better. Hold on. Let me tell you what I mean. Imagine you are praying, and, and, and you're, imagine you're talking to somebody else. And, and while you're talking to somebody, you're bragging on God. And you're just saying how good and how wonderful God is, and you're meaning it from your heart. And then you go and make a request known to God. You say, God, you know what? I'd really like to have this in my life. If it's your will, I just put this in your hands, and I know that you're going to answer. If it be your will, no matter what, you're going to answer. I just thank you for that, God. I think that God would be a whole lot more apt to answer prayers if we would give him the glory he deserves. Amen? I think he'd be a whole lot more apt to answer our prayers 
that we pray the most and believe that he is a wonderful God. Because, you know what, he sees our hearts. He knows if we're kind of believing that he'll answer or if we really know that he's going to answer. There's a lot to be said for powerful prayer. The Bible says this. He says, now therefore give me this mountain. You understand that this mountain was of the Anakims. The Anakims were a race of giants. There were giants in the land. And we're not just talking about, you know, a really tall guy. We're talking about giants. We're talking about 10, 11 foot tall and even my worst fear, a giant, one of them had six toes on each foot. Good Lord. I don't like feet in the first place and then six toes and he's a giant. One of them had a big bed of, uh, of iron and, and, and another giant was uh, Goliath and Goliath had brothers. I mean, all these giants, they were of the race of giants. And as a matter of fact, do you remember in the Bible where we were reading that Caleb was given the city of Hebron? There's another name for that city. It was this. Kirjath Arba. Arba was the king of the giants, pretty much. Now, giants came back in the book of uh, Genesis. But the Bible says that fallen angels uh, came and laid with the women of the land because they thought they were fair. I believe that Satan sent them to do this because he knew that God had a plan. We read in Genesis where he says... You will bruise his heel, but I will bruise his head. In other words, I, I, have, a, I have a plan. And, and Satan, you're going to be wiped out. My plan is of salvation. And Satan didn't want that plan to follow through. So he tried to pollute the bloodline that he knew Jesus was coming through. Caleb was on the side of Judah. And so when he was given this area, he was saying, hey, listen, I'm going to take this area that I have been promised from God. And I'm going to change it from this land of giants and impurity. And I'm going to make it. Because Hebron means fellowship. He said, I'm going to change this from being a dominion and a place. This, this is what Satan wants to do in our lives. He wants to have a big old mountain in our lives that is of impurity. That is not dedicated to God. But the lion of the tribe of Judah, oh hallelujah. He has come to take that mountain in your life. And to take it away. And instead of being a shrine to evil and hypocrisy, to be an absolute uh, uh, power of righteousness, this is what God wants to do in our lives. Now listen to this. It says right here. It says, as the Lord spoke in that day, he believed it was a message from God for him to take this now. He believed he was on a divine mission. So when he asked, he asked in faith. Now, number four, and finally, number one, because of the prophecy of the word. Number two, because of Caleb's faithfulness. Number three, because he asked in faith. He was faithful, and when you're faithful, it's easy to ask in faith. Number four, and finally, because it was God's will and his portion. You see, when they took the land of Canaan, they had these things called Urim and Thurman. And it was how God relayed his will to the high priest. When God was giving his will out to the high priest, and he gave it to Moses and Aaron. He was telling them where he wanted his people. And the tribe of Judah actually held up the banner of Christ. Held up righteousness longer than any other tribe. They all failed eventually. But he held it up longer. Judah got their inheritance first. Because of faithfulness. The Bible says, and the first shall be last, and the last shall be first. The Bible says the wealth of the unrighteous is laid up for the righteous. I don't care what the world is telling you now. We're on the bottom of the total pole of the world right now. You understand? God's coming back. And Christians, and when we speak of righteousness, and we speak of godliness, we are hated for that. And as a matter of fact, there are preachers now being thrown in jail. In this world that we live in, because they speak out against homosexuality. They speak out against, uh, 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 about God being the only way to salvation. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. There is no other that can go to God except by me. That's pretty exclusive, isn't it? But the world doesn't want that. The world wants their own way. 
Well, if I feel like I'm doing the best I can, I should go to heaven. I was talking to two guys this last week. Uh, Derek knows the one. We, he's met him before. and uh, It was his friend also that was there. And both of them were talking about coming to church. But they both, about every fifth or sixth word, would talk about, would, would throw this in. But I'm a good person. But I'm a good person. Satan wants to convince you of that. He wants to convince you that you're a good person, you're a person, so what you, whatever you do is fine. Listen, that's what the world thinks. And because we say that there's something different, because we say that our righteousness is a filthy rag that we got to compare to God, because we say that Jesus is the only way, the world hates us for that. The world ridicules us for that. For going to church. For not using vulgar language. For not doing the things of the world. Because God set a higher standard for us. Amen? God sets a higher standard for us every day. Caleb was risen to that standard. And though the Canaanites would have said, no, he's the idiot. He's the wrong one because we have giants in this land. God said he'll be the first one to receive his inheritance. Isn't that awesome? You understand when God comes back, he'll be the first one to receive your inheritance. Hallelujah. And those that are dead and gone before us will rise to meet them in the air and forever shall be. Hallelujah. Now understand this. We are members of this tribe of Judah. Being God's people, we are members of this tribe of Judah. And God said, hey listen, Judah is going to have this portion in the promised land. Even here on earth as members of the tribe of Judah. God said he's got a portion for us at the table. Hallelujah. But listen, God is not going to force feed us. we got to go up to the table and pull the chair out and sit down and eat. Amen. And none of us have a problem with that physically. But spiritually, we say, I want to be at this place with God. And I want to grow in God. And then we say, okay, God, do it. It takes us putting one step in front of the other. Even if it's a small decision every day, it's taking the next decision, and the next decision is deciding for the righteous cause. Amen? Amen. And I promise you this the last shall be first, and the first shall be last. Amen? Amen. Now, I'm going to go over these one more time. You want your request answered? If it's in God's Word, it'll be answered. If you're faithful, it'll be answered. If you ask in faith, believing, it will be answered. And because it was God's plan, you are a member of the tribe of Judah. In other words, you're saved. It will be answered. Every head bowed, every eye closed.